Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Game Week Weekly here. I'm your host, Antog, and I'm hanging out with my co-host, Ghost. And today, we will be discussing the Destiny 2 beta. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So as you guys know, early access for the Destiny 2 beta was released for Xbox One on July 19th. And for PS4, it was July 18th. You guys probably heard this a bazillion times. The uh, open beta access that um, opened for everybody was released July 20th. Uh, we did have access to the farm, uh, I think it was the 21st, right, for um, one hour. Unfortunately, I was unable to actually go and explore the farm. No. So, unfortunately, we do not have any footage of the farm, which really, really, like, sucks because we were really hoping to do that and get that footage out for you guys, and that's what we were going to have in the background. But what you guys are watching right now is the stream that we did when we first, or when I first booted up Destiny 2. Um, it was pretty freaking awesome. We had a lot of you guys coming in and joining us for it, so hopefully you guys will enjoy watching it. But today we're just going to be discussing a few of the things that we saw. We're going to be going over the strike, our thoughts about it, as well as the first campaign mission, and uh, potentially where we think it will end up going, how it will lead um, into the, the game as Destiny. So, uh... Yeah, let's just start off with the strike. So the strike that we gained access to was the Inverted Spire. Um, basically the uh, Red Legion, which is the main enemy faction in Destiny 2, have uh, basically placed a bunch of these dig sites around this planet called Nessus, I think is what it's called, right? Um, and you have to go and prevent this Vex mine from awakening and the Red Legion destroying it and taking its power and using it against us, or the Guardians I should say. Uh, it's honestly pretty, really, really fun. We, me and Ghost actually found like the secret area. Um, it was pretty epic, of course, we like ended stream right after that so we weren't unable to capture any of that, although I think Ghost was able to, to record it. Yeah, I got like 30 um, minutes of footage of that. Crap, guys. Alright, so, raid location. I'm gonna interrupt Antog for a sec. Hopefully that's okay, but this looks like to be a potential raid location. Um, I'm not gonna say anything for certain because obviously we don't know. Uh, it could be a raid location. It could be just be, I mean, an area for open world, but we definitely found something. Yeah, and we even found some new, um, Fallen as well. Fallen, the... The Marauders, uh, and then there's a cloaked enemy that you can guys see. I'll probably put this up tomorrow or something, but there's a cloaked enemy. I think it's called the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Avenger or something. I don't know. It's some, like, really foreboding and dark name, but the Marauder has a pike. He's sort of like a melee slash charge uh, heavy kind of, but light at the same time. I mean, you guys, if you played the Division, they're like the shotgunners, basically. Yeah, it's honestly pretty interesting because now the Cabal have their own little melee um, enemy class and then now the Fallen has their melee class so I'm interested to see what the Hive are going to be like. We haven't seen any footage of the Hive or even if they're going to be in the game. Pretty sure they will. Uh, Vex are kind of the same thing. The one noticeable change, at least for me, unless that's just me being stupid and not noticing things from the original Destiny, is that the Minotaurs now have a sweet spot or a soft spot, I guess, like a, um, a area where you can get hit, get precision hits. And in year or in Destiny One, I don't remember being able to do that. So that's one new thing, um, at least that I can notice from the new Vex. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. The Red Legion is literally the Cabal. Um, there's a few new enemy types. We have the Gladiators, which is which are very tanky melee units. Um, they will jump at you and lunge at you, and they're very very annoying. Uh, you have these new um, war dot war warhounds or something. They're armored. They're pretty weak, but they will like easily shred through you because they um, attack you in packs, which is really really cool. Um, so that's kind of something unique for that kind of certain enemy class. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to have that for Fallen. Haven't seen anything for that or any of the other enemy factions. But that is a new addition for the Cabal. And then the Pharynxes, the shield guys, they now have an ability where they can um, expand their shield now. 
so they're even more annoying. But one cool thing about it is you can actually, there's this little dot in the center of their shield that you can shoot that will disable their shield for a few seconds and stagger them, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, it doesn't take too much damage. I was using a scout rifle, it took maybe one or two shots to it, and it would explode. But they will regain it. Um, and other than that, the, it's basically the Cabal with a few more additions to it. Um, still, the annoying tanky enemy faction, as usual, Vex are still, like I said, the same. Um, haven't s Still haven't seen anything from the Hive yet. Um, Fallen have a, had a few new enemies, it looks like, that have been joined in. Uh, that have joined them. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. We don't know if there's going to be any other enemy factions included. At least I don't know if there's gonna be any new enemy factions included, like in Destiny 1 when the Taken, um, that was kind of considered a new enemy faction, even though they were just kind of other enemy factions being taken, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's basically all the news, at least that I have. I don't know if Ghost has anything else, but I'm going to let him talk because I've been talking for a long time now. Yeah, it's all good. Um, one thing I'd like to add, I like how they sort of hinted at new factions for the Fallen. Because if you look very closely, it they have a purple banner and purple um, regalia. So I don't know what Fallen House that is. I said faction, but i um, very excited about that. Uh, as far as road locations for raids and stuff go, I mean, and that's going to come to us in due time. And obviously, this is probably not a raid location, but I mean... It's going to be something, and if you watch the footage, I'll probably put it up um, tomorrow, like I said. Uh, if you watch it, we actually got a part of the map where we could glitch through and see uh, hidden caves and just different stuff. Um, I actually found a chest in the video that was uh, somewhere I couldn't get to, but that's just another hint. Uh, a lot of people have been finding from the uh, Inverted Spire Strike, they have been finding rare engrams, and that may not be a lot uh, to you guys or mean a lot. Uh, maybe you've heard about it and you're super hyped for it, but the rare engrams are actually 250 or 205, I can't remember, light. And the all of the weapons we got and gear in the beta was all 200. You couldn't get anything above that. You could get different variants of stuff, and there are three armor sets, which we might have a video on that too. Um, but you could not get, until now, 205 stuff. But I think they patched it today since they had an update and people were sad about it because they thought they were going to um, patch it in the new update, which I think they have if I'm not mistaken, but that's awesome because they had a lot of Suro stuff and um, especially the Warlock armor looks really cool now. Uh, I'm very excited to see what the exotics are going to look like. We've gotten um, the Risk Runner, the Sweet Business, and the Sunshot, uh, and those are the only three we know of except for the Dubious Volley, which we uh, no one's had gameplay with except for the devs, so super excited about that. But uh, as far as the strike go, um, I'm going to turn the conversation on to our opinions of the strike. Uh, I want to start out with mine. My opinion going in was mind blown. That's all I can say basically for the first part of the strike. I was like, holy cow. And a lot of people have said it's like a mini raid and I think they're correct. Um, it's very, very fun. It's got some mechanics to it. Not a lot of jumping puzzles, thank God. But uh, it had one or two and I kept dying. You'll see in the footage I died like a nub. Uh, multiple times but that's because I was using blink and stuff and I couldn't get my footing but anyway uh, Antog just traversed over everything like a boss but I was very excited to just be in the raid or excuse me in the strike see I got raid on my mind now um, but it was very good the first part uh, as far as the rest of the strike goes the boss mechanics were phenomenal I'm gonna turn it over to Antog and see what his opinions were but then we're gonna touch back um, and bring the conversation back to just the bosses and enemy types in the uh, strike. Yeah, so just like Ghost said, my mind was pretty much blown. Des or Grungy definitely stepped up their game with this new strike. It did really feel like it was one of those miniature raids um, that I think that in year one we didn't necessarily have. Um, I think a few of the strikes, probably the most predominant one in my opinion, was the Shield Brothers. Yes. That one. I kind of felt that that one was like a miniature raid. It did take place obviously in the Taken ship and you kind of had to traverse all over the place and um, I thought that it, that was probably the closest thing to a miniature raid but this like kind of blows that out of the water. Like Ghost said there were mechanics in there. Um, there were a few jumpy puzzles but there's not like a whole lot. They didn't 
do a whole lot of them, which was obviously pretty amazing because I really am not good at parkour at all in this game. Um, the boss itself was uh, pretty. Uh, sorry, the boss himself or itself was pretty difficult. Um, it actually started out where you would go on the first floor, right, and then you would every time you got like a third of the health down, it would move down um, one floor until you got to the third floor. Um, first floor pretty annoying because he kind of teleports all over the place. The second floor is really easy because he turns into the, the flame energy, so um, and you can just hide behind the pillars and there's this, like, this little glitch spot that you could do where you wouldn't take damage from the, when he, um, you know, turns the floor into fire, and then also you wouldn't take any damage from him, the actual boss. So there's kind of like a little cheese spot that I would use to do that. And then the third floor is basically just this like totally open massive area where this boss will basically circle around you. Um, if you guys have played it, you will already have known this, but just kind of throwing that out there for anybody who is new to it or haven't played it yet. But yes, I definitely would give it a 10 out of 10 for their first um, strike in the beta. Um, that's probably because I haven't played a strike in a long time, but still, it was very good and I think a lot of other people will agree with me. So, um, with that out of the way, I guess we can move on to the boss and the enemies that we encountered. Uh, so the boss was the just uh, basically a Vex mind. Um, he will change energies. He goes from Void, Solar, and then Arc for the finisher. Um, and there's also a cool little mechanic on the on the second floor um, where he will. Well, uh, turn the floor into fire and you have to get up on top of these pillars. There's a few pillars kind of spread around um, Some of them I would you know the smaller ones the ones that aren't as high as ones that I would jump on because uh, The you could use you could actually jump behind them and use them as cover and then shoot um, Right above them and that was always very useful The higher ones you can use obviously, but they don't work as good because you're kind of out there in the open enemies do spawn around the little area that he spawns in so you do have to worry about ad control and they do keep respawning I'm pretty sure especially on the third floor with the fanatics once you um, destroy his head it gets even more annoying and you really have to be careful because on the third floor when he turns to arc damage not only will you have a giant boss coming after you you also have enemies that will chase you and do a, a pretty good amount of damage and on top of that they really just stack up on each other so it makes it even more difficult um, and then on top of that you do not have any cover so you know it's just I mean you have a little bit of cover here and there but it's really not anything like the rest of the like the first two floors um, which really really is annoying and you have to be careful and organized with your team see uh, Titans are gonna be very Sentinel Titans are gonna be super useful for that with their little shield they can pop as well as using the um, Word of Dawn that would be very useful as well you could just pop that in one area and just kind of take cover there um, however he can go into the thing and just um, blow you up so that's also another thing that you got to worry about or into the world of Dawn, he will actually chase you, um, which can be very annoying. But other than that, it was really, really fun, really, really awesome. You guys will obviously see us playing through it in the background. Um, that was just kind of our footage. I think we ended up having to wipe once on our first attempt. But other than that, it's really, it's not insanely difficult. So, um, let's see, I guess. That's pretty much it for that. Do you have anything else you wanted to discuss? Yeah, um, I'd just like to give my opinion on it too. I Again, 10 out of 10. It was awesome. Uh, there's a mechanic that you will see in the video and you will be like, what the actual heck? Because the Risk Runner, oh my gosh, that is the best SMG in the game right now. If you are on the arc stage on the boss, no brainer, equip the risk runner because you will stack that damage up. Every time he shoots one bullet at you, our uh, conductor can stack up to three times and you will not even unload a clip on him. It will just keep unloading and unloading. And one of the mechanics I used um, and I've used later, not so much now as I did uh, then, but 
you can actually shoot him, activate Arc Conductor, and chain the lightning between the adds, which a very important part of that strike is adds, obviously, uh, with any strike, but um, I was very impressed with it again. Uh, one more thing I'd like to discuss before we go is the topic of would we... What the differences, I guess, between Destiny 1 and 2 are and how that's going to affect the gameplay. Um, I'm going to start out by saying it is very much a departure, but very familiar at the same time. Um, it's got its own feel to it. They tweaked almost half the stuff in the game. They're adding new currency. Uh, the load times are phenomenal, which that's going to be discussed in another video probably just... Uh, mechanics and whatnot, but the load times, it takes 13 seconds to switch characters because Antog and I timed it. I said, you know what, I'm going to switch to my hunter for this, and it takes 13 seconds, whereas before it would take maybe up to 10 minutes, which is a lot of time depending on your internet, but it would take forever to switch between uh, your characters, and also it takes about 5 maybe uh not five seconds but like 15 seconds to load up into a crucible match which is phenomenal you used to wait maybe 10 to 20 minutes to even load into a crucible match um and then it would probably ditch you or lag you out or something at the end of it uh but i'm just very happy with the load times uh i'd like antog's opinion but i'm very satisfied with the direction destiny's going as far as mechanic tweaks and just different other things like that yeah, I would definitely have to agree with you. Um, I think one great thing about Destiny 2 um, is that, and it being a sequel, is that it doesn't necessarily throw you into a game that you're completely unfamiliar with. Even if you didn't play Destiny 1, things are still going to be relatively easy to get into and kind of understand. Um, I guess kind of the biggest thing about not um, have already playing Destiny 1 is the lore part and understanding. Um, obviously there are, this is like a new faction we're versing with new enemies, and if you haven't played Destiny 1, you're not going to know a whole lot about what the Cabal are, um, why they would even want to be doing this, and that kind of stuff, which, um, honestly are just kind of minor things that I think that new players can just get over. Um, but I, th I, I think that Destiny 2 does a great job at not throwing the player under the bus because they, um, didn't play through Destiny 1. Mechanics-wise, um, they did a revamp the load times, which I was very excited about, and I think that is due in part because they're not supporting Xbox 360 or PS3, so they don't have they don't have that console limitation. Um, and on top of that, they're actually adding PC to the list, which is really really awesome for you PC players who were unable to play the original Destiny. Now you have your chance to play Destiny 2, which is awesome. So increasing load times really just makes the game much smoother to run into games and stuff um, and it doesn't take a long, long time for you to really find that game obviously this is the beta so a lot of people are going to keep playing it um, but I mean really it's just it's an amazing beta um, it does kind of get repetitive at least for me it got repetitive but other than that like really the, the beta was solid and I really really enjoyed it as I'm pretty sure Ghost did as well I did but um Thank you guys for all the wonderful support, and if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for weekly Destiny 2 content, and I've been your host, Ghost. I've been Anton. And we'll see all you wonderful people in the next video. Peace. Peace.